One year ago, I published a paper and a video about a new plan I designed for terraforming Venus, which involves building an entire new surface around the planet floating above the hot, dense atmosphere, what I like to call cloud continents. That paper was a thought experiment. There are no plans to terraform Venus in the works. I'll be the first to admit that it would be silly to even consider it in this century. But I want you to look past that for a moment and envision a time, hundreds of years from now, when we might decide to try it. I commissioned this artwork from concept artist Dusty Crosley to illustrate the potential for someday terraforming Venus. Imagine, if you will, the year is 2523, and terraforming operations on our sister planet are in full swing. Floating tiles, essentially airships filled with buoyant nitrogen from Venus's atmosphere, are maneuvered into position by robotic drones and attached to the edge of a floating continent that already spans half the planet. Some 70 billion of them will be needed to complete the new surface, a years-long operation in itself. Activity is frantic here at the edge, as this first step is the one that must be done all at once before the rest of the work can begin. Beneath the tiles, sails of a light but tough fabric catch the wind, constantly adjusting to make it flow more parallel to the surface, easing the strain on it, and keeping it spinning with Venus's super-rotating atmosphere. Later, they will be converted to attachment points for the much larger lifting cells that will support the planet's future civilization. The top surface of the tiles is mostly white, reflecting sunlight to keep the upper atmosphere at its cool, human-tolerable temperature. Eventually, about half of the tiles will be covered with solar panels, but only a few of them have been installed so far, just enough to keep up with operations. The vast solar farms that will power the conversion of the atmosphere to oxygen will come later. Overseeing the operation is a floating colony, held aloft by a tall stack of airship tiles. This settlement is a small one, as can be seen from the fact that its dome is a single piece. Almost a company town, it moves with the edge of the continent and monitors the drones as they work its long stabilizing masts serving a dual role as maintenance and charging platforms. The outdoor workers in this town don't need spacesuits, even outside the dome, only oxygen masks and protection against the acidic clouds. Other than that, the weather conditions are fairly pleasant. The inland regions of the continent feature much more impressive cities. Sky islands, like this one but much wider, are being built out to support true floating cities, kilometers wide and with their own crop lands, covered by domes that are not a single piece, but are assembled from transparent versions of the same tiles. A chain of these sky islands has been built around the North Pole to oversee the robotic mining on the Ishtar Terra Plateau, which, along with the atmosphere, supplies most of the raw materials the colonists need, except one. In the distance, you can see a ship entering the atmosphere, arrow breaking as it comes in to rendezvous with one of the northern cities. This is a tanker ship from Earth, carrying the one thing that on Venus is always in short supply, water. Bulk importation of hard-landed ice blocks from Mars can't begin until the continent is completed to catch the ensuing rainfall. And that's just the beginning. The terraforming of Venus is a project larger than the entire history of the United States. The atmosphere itself won't be breathable for another hundred years. But to the people of the 26th, 27th, and 28th centuries, if we're very lucky, perhaps it will be within our grasp. <laughs>